Hey guys, welcome back to this channel of mine here in my little corner of the interwebs. I am pretty much done with winter at this point and I'm gonna just start drawing the flowers that remind me of the warmth of summer and the sun and not being freezing cold all the time. So today I'm gonna be drawing Shasta daisies because they just remind me of summertime and all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, uh, let's just go ahead and get started on it. So as always, I would suggest starting by looking up a photo of the said flower you are drawing. So look for a picture of the daisies that I wanted to use as a reference. Um, these are the ones I thought were really beautiful, so. I'm going to go ahead and get my Micron pen, same one I always use in these videos. And I'm using my little moleskin notebook, which I have been for the past few weeks. So getting started, I'm going to go ahead and kind of plan out where I want my blooms to be. This is totally arbitrary and up to you and your eyes and whatever you like to see, but um, I'm gonna start with kind of, um, it's almost like a lumpy egg yolk kind of a shape. Sorry to anyone who has an aversion to eggs out there, but that's kind of just what I think about when I'm drawing the center of a daisy. So just kind of this wiggly oval egg yolk kind of a shape like that. And it's kind of bumpy because if you were looking at that reference picture, the center of a daisy isn't really like smooth. I don't think the center of most flowers are very smooth. Anyway, I'm going to start drawing these petals. What I love about this flower and what makes it so easy to draw is that the petals can literally just kind of go all over the place. They don't have to be even. They don't even have to be that precise. I'm drawing them kind of slowly today just because I'm drawing them with you, but I think that the thing you want to think about when you're drawing these petals is that the ones that are at the top visually are the ones that are behind the center when you're facing it, and so those are going to be longer, weirdly enough. So those are the ones that are kind of standing up straight in the back if you look at a picture of them. And as you work your way around the daisy, the petals in the front, when you're drawing that general outline at first, they're actually going to be kind of shorter. Just like, not obnoxiously shorter, but slightly shorter because they're foreshortened. They're like coming towards you. And then when I'm drawing some petals, I like to make them kind of thin, like it's the side of the petal. And I always like fill in the space a little bit by drawing some petals behind. But it's really foolproof, don't overthink it, don't worry about making it perfect, symmetrical, even, anything like that. Because what's beautiful about daisies is the way they have space between the petals and the way that they aren't, you know, perfect. So if you can see there, I'm drawing the petals almost like a little doggy ear. Um, again, not very precise. I kind of have this portion sped up, but I'm drawing petals going over and coming under and kind of waving and twisting and adding movement in that way. And this petal um, is actually curved upward, so I'll kind of show you more detail on how to draw that um, when I draw the flower that's kind of below it where that center is there. Um, and anything that looks kind of short and stubby, like a little blob, that's because the petal is bent completely backwards so we can't see it. Some of them are en gonna end up being kind of curved um, or twisted. Um, and that just, it looks crazy right now, but when you add detail, you can kind of imagine how that's gonna look in real life. So drawing those curved leaves, I kind of like to start um, imagining this daisy to the side and you'll see what I mean when, when I finish it. But starting with these more oval shapes, um, that represents the part of the flower that is curving upward toward you. And so you're by drawing these parallel lines, connecting it to the center, that's where the length of the petal is going to come in. And then you can just go around drawing the petals like normal. That one, the top of it is curved again, so that one would be coming toward you. Um, and kind of, I'm drawing the longer petals in the back and the shorter petals in the front, just like the first flower that I drew there, but it's almost rotated 90 degrees. But yeah, 
just kind of filling it in wherever I feel like there needs to be more petals, drawing some behind, drawing some in a way that's thin, letting the petals cross over each other and come out from behind and all that stuff, like I said just a moment ago. Um, and I'm feeling like I probably want to draw another one. It would be just fine just like this, but I kind of want to show you guys how I draw it from the complete side. So not like from the side upward, but from the side like eye level almost. And that's just by drawing that center shape kind of taller like that and having most of the petals that are seen on the bottom portion of the center. And that's just going to make it look like you're looking at it from the side at eye level. Um, and then having those little blobs just imply that, <laughs> those little blobs, just implies that there are petals there, but they're going behind the flower, those little blobs at the top. And then you can just fill in anywhere that feels like there, there needs to be a little bit more. But if you do look at the photo of a daisy, um, you really don't have perfect petals everywhere all the time, especially if it's like later in, like they've been bloomed, they have bloomed and they've been open up for a very long time. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and draw the details. I like to, uh, when I'm drawing the details of a Shasta daisy, I generally will go around the center like this. You don't have to start with the center. Sometimes it's nice too though. Oh, Franny, how thoughtful, zooming in so we can see the details in detail. Ooh, so like you can see there, I'm drawing more dots than drawing little kind of squiggly like C shapes almost, like just small C shapes around the edge. The center of the daisy is kind of spherical, and so you want to make it have like a highlight point, which is the area that doesn't have any shading, and it's going to look like it's curving into like a rounded shape. Drawing the shadows of the petal is also going to help create that depth around the center there. I'm just doing the shading like I normally would with the side of my pen and creating those thinner lines that are more sparse um, and aren't perfect um, to create that uh, dimension and detail. So as you can see there, it's very dark at the center where the petal connects to the center of the flower and that's go what's gonna create the effect of the petal dipping into the center. And as you create that on each petal, it's gonna just give it so much depth. And that's what I think really amps up this kind of a floral piece is creating that curve using these shadows and using these strokes. And so I'm just kind of going around to each petal and thinking about that. The petals that are behind, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But yeah, just focus most of the shading to the very bottom of that petal. And then if it's behind, I feel like the pre the majority of the petal will be dark. And that's gonna kind of trick the eye into thinking that that petal is behind. Simple as that. It helps sometimes to rotate the paper to get a better angle. Sorry if you can't see because of my crazy thumb in the way. But yeah, just kind of keep filling it in. The spots where the, the light is hitting it, you can kind of leave blank. You don't have to overdo it with the detail, but with the pieces of the flower that are behind, Definitely give it a little bit more shading. Throw some more shade on it. I'm just kind of going in and adding a little bit more of that fluffy curviness, kind of deciding where the highlight point is going to be like so, and that white space is just a highlight. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through and do all the details. So same old, same old, going to go around and do the detail on the center. This time I think the highlight point is going to be closer. It's going to be very much to the right, but more... Try and think of the light in the same place if you want to have it be a cohesive kind of a piece. Since the flower is angled more upward, then you're going to have that highlight point be more on top. Does that make sense? Can you see what I mean? Anyway, so this petal, the shadow is going to be right at the base of the petal by the center and right underneath this line here. And that's it. 
I really don't fill in the um, the curved piece because I believe that the light is hitting it right on the top and so it doesn't have that shadow of depth there. The shadow comes on the under part of that curved piece, which is represented by that little oval blob. But anyway, I'm just going to keep filling this in just like the way I described the first one. Anywhere that there's a, a flower or a petal behind, I'm going to fill it in darker. Anytime that the petal dips into the center, anywhere those connect, I'm going to fill in darker. All the centers of the flowers, um, I don't fill those in all the way to take into account where the light is hitting it. Anywhere that there's a curved flower, like a lot of them in this one, I just fill in the spots where there would be a shadow, as you can see, and I leave that curved part kind of blank because the light is hitting it. And I think if you think about those things with just about any flower, you can create this kind of an effect. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish filling in the flower and then we'll add some final touches. So now I'm just gonna add some stems to finish off the piece, thinking about which way the flower is facing and that kind of helps me determine which way I want my stems to go. I'm not being super particular about this. I'm just thinking about kind of keeping the lines as parallel as I can, filling in the spots that are behind the flower or under the flower. Yeah, just like that. It's pretty solid. I think this is a, this is a really beautiful flower to learn to draw. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. If you end up drawing this little flower, be sure to take a picture and tag me in it on Instagram. Let me see your work because I really do love to see it and it's so encouraging for me to see the results of the work that I'm doing. So I hope this brought a little springtime, summertime love into your life. I will see you in the next video, which actually might be on Monday because my one year YouTube anniversary is coming up. I'm going to make a special little video for that, so be on the lookout for it. Yeah. All right. See you guys.